allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
Kristen up there. Good morning. Uh, just a couple things, actually. I went to that informational meeting at the college in dealing with the new proposed hog farm in Ramsey County. And I did ask in regards to what their elevation is for the structures out there. And at that time, they didn't know. And I did contact the engineering firm that is working with the State Department of Health on the project and requested that. And it's been about a week and a half, and I have not heard. So I will be following up today to see if I can get those elevations in just to see where they're sitting at and um, see whether or not the buildings can go forth where they have stated they would like the project, the buildings for, for the project. I've taken a look at that, and that was, they're about 1470s. They are, but I, I figured the exact number should come in from that engineering department. I, I've looked as well, and I can do, you know, a best educated guess from um, Google Earth Maps and, you know, different things like that. But um, I have requested the, the formal elevations come in on that certified elevation certificate for that project. Um, Another thing is next week I will be gone um, all week except I'll be back on Friday. We have our annual conference. So I'll be gone for that in Bismarck. And then towards the end of the month, um, we do have our annual risk management training uh, meeting. And I will be attending this year in Minot. That's just what worked out with scheduling. Usually I get to the Fargo meeting, but this year it will be, it will be Minot. And it's just today, so I'll leave in the morning and I'll, I'll be back probably around 4.35 o'clock. Other than that, I don't have much else for you. Unless anybody has anything for me. Any questions for Kristen? Thank you. Thank you. Bring us up to Bill Otis. Mr. Trevor, would be okay if we do our my budget first? Yep, that would be. Yeah. If you please look at our budget on page 42. slight changes. Uh, Brenda and my salary, we actually, if you look at what was proposed in 2017, uh, we actually dropped a little bit compared to the biennium of uh, supposed to be receiving 3% due to the state budget. So you'll see that Brenda and mine are down. And for those that may not remember, uh, what you see there is half our salary. That the other half comes from the uh, state of North Dakota. And that's that NDSU and that's set by them. Um, that's just the way this part of that budget has been always been. Uh, Cindy's, which is in third line item down, uh, that was based on the steps and salary that was put forth by the HR. And then if you look at the fixed charges, that's just the insurance changes there uh, that took place. And then I did increase travel a thousand, even though if you look at our balance when this was actually printed, we had a balance of, I gotta find the line item here, $4,379. What we do is we, we try to use state, state weight when we travel out of county. Uh, that's a cost saving measure to the county for us doing that. Uh, we can usually save something in the neighborhood of 20 cents a mile. So when we travel anything out of the county, whether it be to Minnewakan or Fort Houghton or Lakota or whatever, uh, we either do that or we take a half rate on our personal vehicle. Okay. So with that balance of <laughs> DOT is pretty slow about well, getting us the balance of what we own, and that us, this is why this is still higher yet. We'll be getting a, a pretty big bill from them pretty soon to reduce this down. Uh, after that, everything else has changed. It's not changed, and they've been like that since I've been here. Um, uh, equipment, uh, dues, all those have all stayed the same. There's the balance on the bottom um, of that. So, those were the, the only changes this year, and of course, you know, there's nothing very difficult here because NESU sets ours, uh, the county sets cities, you know, it, it's, it's a pretty easy budget. Any questions on that? That's good. Okay. Next week, um, a week ago, I organized a trip and we traveled to North Platte, Nebraska. And what we did was, is there's a new lead coming in on the horizon. Uh, we have one, two, three, there. 
Uh, I'm sorry about the picture on top. And I even forgot one for myself, but <coughs> the new the weeds on the horizon are Palmer Amaral and uh, Waterhead. And if you would look at that bottom picture, the bottom part first where it talks about the amount of applications. Okay, this was one of the fields. This can be really a brief, but I will definitely give you more if you're interested in stopping up, but I can show you a better picture as well. But that bottom is all the applications that was made to that field above since March 22nd of herbicides. Two gallons plus. And if you look at the top picture, and it's very difficult to see, I know, but if you look, see the dark green is the soybeans, and the light green is Palmer that's growing through it still. Still, and I, I can't. Uh, you, you can, you're welcome to stop up right next time I'll bring you a, a bigger phone on a picture. Or we could even put it on the screen up there so you can see it. It's soybeans. This is in soybeans. Soybean field. A soybean field with that whole application it on says top. It May 2nd, but it doesn't say what the plan is. But for the end. It was planted May 2nd, but it doesn't say what it was planted yeah. to. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know what crop you were doing. Yeah. Soybeans. All they plant there is soybeans and corn because of land costs. They can't plant a full season crop like wheat or barley or something because they can't sustain that $300 an acre cash rent or the $8,000 an acre land value. So they yeah, were restricted to. So. Yeah. So they're restricted to soybeans and corn. Bill, can you repeat uh, what you called that weed? What is the weed? Yeah. Homer Amaranth. A M A R A M D H. And we actually have water net now in southeastern North Dakota. The scary part of this is, is I saw a field down there where in the corner of a pivot where they had to they're doing a research trial of fifteen thousand. Yeah, fifteen thousand. No, I didn't get my tech was it again. I told you, Jeff, what was that? It was a big number. Yeah, it was really, really large, you know, like, of how many plants per square foot. Not 300, not 500, there was 15, 1,500, there's where it was. Yeah, there you go. Plants in a square foot. Can you imagine the density of that? It's just amazing. They got corn that's 10 feet tall and Palmer is 2 feet above it. <coughs> so what they're doing is, is some of the neighbors are harvesting their crops. And they're cleaning this up, this seed out at the end of the operation and sending it east to a processor who is sending it across the U.S. as organic bird food. Oh yeah, I mean, this is, a, this is an issue. Really. Alaska is allowing that? Agriculture department? Or We're working with the Ag department right now trying to get it on the noxious weed list. Because right now it's not because we don't have the weed here. And I, I really wish I could have had a better picture for you to see because I've got others that are just, they're so But I think one of the scary things with this is, is if we drive our county this year, you'll see some fields out there that are not good with kosher, lamb's quarter, and pig weed. So we get all these weeds growing and Palmer comes in, we're not going to be looking for it because it's already not very clean. So it's a really, really big issue. Really big. You're going to hear a lot about it in the next four or five months from the extension. And hopefully, the state ag department will get involved. In. And the uh, ag department or the noxious weed people, they don't have a, an issue with uh, that being sold as, as bird food? We're working on that. Right now, no. But, but as far as nationwide? Right now, no. Wow. I was just looking it up online and it says it's used as a, uh, it's highly edible and nutritious. <laughs> so birds? <laughs> yeah. But it's very truly, it's, it's, what kills it? Nothing. It, it used to, they used to have a, Esther don't seat. kill it? You see the bottom of your sheet? Yeah. That's, it, that's what was on there. It says, I mean Esther don't kill it. Rodney spray will not kill it. Yeah. What happens is that is it will back off that first level, but because it produces so many seeds, by the time they get done two weeks later, it's solved that again. Esther won't kill it. Here it says right here, in many places the plant has developed resistance since at least 2006 to glyphosate, a widely used broad spectrum herbicide. Yeah, 
The only thing that's going to kill is the only myth or mechanical village. you got to see the body of rock. You know, so you can go in there and use Esther. Right. And, and then again, because of their land costs, they can't. Well, I think that's going to change. It's going to have to. Yeah. yeah. There'll be less soybeans planted in this country. I'll guarantee that. Yeah, it's not. And, and we can make that relationship from there to here. Absolutely. I agree with you. Yeah. On that. yeah. Um, actually, maybe you heard salt cedar was found. Did you all hear that down on the West Shore, right south of Highway 20, just over the dike. Um, Roger was down and sprayed them, but how many more are we not seeing? You know, that's another very, very bad lead where it takes up a lot of moisture, which is good. But when it gets the moisture in the plant, then it spews it all over the ground as salt. So it makes the rest of that ground then um, unacceptable for plant growth. So. Be, be looking for that, and, if you, and again, I've been putting out quite a bit of stuff with the local radios and all, uh, but another very bad weed for our lake, very, very bad weed. It looks like a juniper, and when it's growing during the season, it's got a pinkish flower on top. Um, if you see that, please let I or Roger or somebody else so we get it taken care of. Okay? Esther is taking care of that, huh? No. What no. does? Because it's a long water's edge. We're restricted to herbicide use on water's edge. But Esther will take care of that. Not where it's growing, because it's along water's edge. Arsenal is the is the product that's labeled for I don't even worry about going in that water well. Yeah. Our Arsenal did did a job that according to Roger on the stuff that, that was falling south of the south of town. Yeah, but then we're finding a regrowth. Oh, so, so another application would be. But how many places are we not finding? Well, that's just it. I know Roger said that he had gone out with Game and Fish and, and surveyed some of the shoreline um, around the intakes for the state outlets, and yeah. none was found there. So, um, you know, and then some other places that they inspected. So maybe that was an isolated incident, but I, I highly doubt it. So be wary. Yeah. Keep an eye out and watch for it. The crops are on, the small grain crop is much better than what we anticipated. Um, we saw the graves that wasn't quite nearly as good because of dryness. Uh, there's farms that are 10 miles apart that give you 15, 20 bushel difference, but only in moisture. Um, so that's something to be kind of thinking about. There were some yields out there that were phenomenal on the small grain crop. Phenomenal. Um, our achievement days, I missed last month, our achievement days was really, really went good with the addition of a tent. Uh, made a really big thanks to Mark for the, for the uh, jumpy, bumpy, whatever. Um, it was okay. Let's see, there's one more thing. Um, oh, next week, I don't know about my availability. My wife's going in for um, complete shoulder tear in her left shoulder. Um, I'm thinking I'll be here because I'm sure she's not going to want me at home. Going there. So, but that's up next week, and we do have fall conference coming up in the middle part of October. And that's a brief version, um, but be <coughs> on the lookout for all this weed information this winter. Uh, we've been pushing it, pushing it, uh, but our producers aren't, aren't getting it. They just don't get it. Bill, why don't you uh, tell everybody what the cost associated with all this chemical? Oh, I'm sorry. Was. Yes, I didn't do that. <coughs> That list in the bottom of that sheet, beside it, you can write 175 bucks per acre. Per acre. 175 dollars. One guy tried the summer following, and all he did was make it worse than the month that he can't farm anymore. He took a 40 acre field and chilled, 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 and now he can't find a crop. He can't stay out of it. Okay, any questions, comments? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Brings us to that. And good morning. Good morning. I have my budget on page 10, it appears. If you have that. <coughs> It's 
far as uh, the salary changes, I just followed what was presented by the steps of, and cost of living change um, from the auditor HR, however that was derived. I did reduce our travel and registration expense by $1,000. Uh, uh, my thought on that is Jarek will hopefully have his classes all completed this November, and so that's you know, a couple times less a year that anyone needs to, to go to Bismarck for um, classes. So with that, otherwise there was no changes. Um, and Candy can maybe explain this a little better because the numbers aren't exactly on the sheet, but there were there was still money um, from a part-time person that was had been put in years before. And so it actually looks like I lowered my budget even though I increased people's salaries. But we took that out or she's taking that out, however. Who brought it up that uh, you're going to move uh, your assistant, one of your assistants down to the treasurer's office? Um, Lisa and I discussed that. Uh, and, and as far as, you know, I'm not worried um, as far as the budget. I don't I think it kind of all works out in a wash. But I know that um, it's, I don't want to really speak to Lisa, but I, I believe that her part time person that she's used maybe isn't able to come back. And we talked about that um, one of uh, Christy could come down and help during that time instead of having to look for somebody else. It, it would, for me, um, it's, not, it's, it's up to Lisa, it's her office, but as far as for my end, and also I think uh, you maybe have mentioned, I, I wasn't at the meeting when it was discussed, but Kristen's maybe going to use our vehicle some, um, right. instead of her purchasing one or whatever you've been right. going on. Yeah, that's not a problem. Um, we just, it's just, if something, we'll just plan to not try and need it when she needs to go, and if something comes up where we need something short, we'll just use our vehicle, you know, but that's just around the company, so it shouldn't be a big deal. So that should work out now, right? Yeah, I think it will give it a shot, and if they want to do that, it's fine. If you get a real buy, you probably Sure, right. As a fact. Yeah. Yeah, usually we can, you know, usually we can schedule something for another time, unless it's something really out of the ordinary. Beth, what are your thoughts on, uh, I know we've had this personal discussion on um, the possibility of finding or looking for a, somebody to fulfill planning and zoning for the county. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your views on the importance of, of that and how you see how that would work out? Or? Um, you know, obviously it's something that's in the news right now with right. the changes. Uh, I think where we see um, the need is we received so many phone calls. It seems like kind of our office is almost the last stop, but I have one more stop and I can have them call you. <laughs> but um, we receive a lot of phone calls. I think people just associate that with our office, I think. And I hate feeling like we're giving them a runaround sometimes, you know, especially for people from out of state or from larger companies. And they want a permit for a pipe or for whatever. I'm like, well, no, there's no, you know, I mean, there's almost no one. You know, we'll give them the chairman of the township, that kind of thing. Um, so that, that's kind of hard, you know, just to feel like we're not giving any answers. Do you think that that would require you know, an additional person, or do you think there would be some way to add more responsibility to somebody's? I think as our office sits currently, yeah. and especially due to the fact that both Chris and Jay have now been in a couple of years, so they're quite familiar with their positions, I think we could um, probably incorporate it into our office, at least try it and see how things go and grow from there. You know, I'm, and not, we're just talking planning and zoning, not the building right, inspection. Right, yeah. right. You know, I think building inspection would be a, a totally different different animal altogether. Uh, also talking with Kristen, um, you know, looking at the floodplain administer, floodplain management mm -hmm. um, portion of her job, I think that needs to be done more more than what it is. I think there's a lot of requirements that FEMA has 
has made through those easements that were done years back on the buyouts that need to be inspected on a regular basis and signed off on and make sure that they're still complying with the easements that were, were done. Um, you know, I don't want to get the county in any kind of bind with with the federal government to lose in our, our national flood insurance endorsements and things like that um, would cost people a lot of money, I think, if we, if we did lose that. So I really think that it's something that we should be looking at. And I know that we're, you know, behind the eight ball with the budget as far as, but it hasn't been approved yet, or we haven't done anything like that. I don't know how how much additional man hours both of those would take if that would if it would take up you know planning and zoning floodplain administration take up half a time um, you know because I think if you did a half time salary within that emergency management position or a half time person within that you get part of that salary back through the state I think that's where you used to work anyway. For planning and so on. No, no. For for if you wanted to create a, a whole other person, um, you could if you because I, I I think you could put somebody in Kristen's office half time, you know, which would also tie into the floodplain administration portion of that job that she's currently doing. Um, you know. So what you're saying basically is create a half-time position like in Kristen's office and then give that person the floodplain management portion of Kristen's portfolio. Then right. we'd be able to receive some cost compensation back for it and then maybe the other portion of that job would then be doing the permitting of the plan. Right. So whether whether, whether or not back. that would work out. You know, because I'm, I'm not sure. It, you know, I don't want to burden Christy or Jared or, you know, on, on the planning and zoning. Um, you know, at, at certain times of the year that it, it can be very busy, um, you know, but I think it's, as we, I think that's going to be more and more relevant uh, department position inquiries as we continue to go through the process of whether it be buildings and rezoning or subdivisions, what have you. Um, and, you know, I think it's a very important part of our, our uh, land use within the county, so um, something to, to think about. Is there a need that townships want us to do it? You know, they're going to have the final say in their own town. Meeting. Right. I think if there was a need, uh, or the townships that would be interested would probably be the ones around the lake. You know, I think the further out, I don't know how much they would want us. Well, there, there's a certain amount of counties or townships as, as well that, that have relinquished their planning and zoning to the county. So we would have all those to do as well. Beth is right that the, most of the, the townships right around the lake are doing their own, whether they would like some help doing that or, you know, a person that they could... And, um, contact that would be more up on the rules, regulations, the kids and pants kind of thing. Um, but it would be an outreach position essentially because yeah. you would be working with the townships and then finding out what they're doing and then and then you know knowing where the new building is happening and things. It would tie in really well to the tax records obviously then you would know what's going on on the countryside and what's happening. Right. Uh, and, and the, the, the talks I've had with some different township officers, I think they would be interested in it, but it would have to be done right. You know, I mean, they still have to you know, continue, uh, keep their rights, obviously, but it would be more of just a help type job, you know, where you would be working together and making things happen, informational, and basically that it would be like the point personnel from the county talking to the townships and saying, okay, what have you guys uh, changed this year in your plan and zoning? within your township, what kind of permits have you let so we know what's being built, what's not, and then we can file it here, and that way we know what, what's going on out there, basically, instead of being, you know, I think if the building inspection ties into that at some point in time, but that's going to be a bigger discussion between us and the townships on how, if they want it, and how we could cost share it. 
to a point on some kind of a structure for payment. And I think that can pay for itself essentially if you did it correctly. Yeah. I you know, if, if you if you put a cost in the permit and, and you make it work, you can do it. But the townships have to be on board. Yeah. Right. I think too, just um, and as someone comes from, I, I work with the Poplar Grove uh, Township Board just personally because uh, I live there, and just um, someone that could help keep get the books for each township somewhere, help them get their maps, you know, and have it somewhere, because every time you turn around, someone can't find the book or doesn't know, or the map was given to somebody and they're no longer living here, and that kind of thing, just to get a little more yeah, organized there's, again. There's so much inquiry about what's going on and what I, they can do, can't do around the lake, what, how, how is this parcel zone, how is that parcel zone, and all that's up to the, the township. But if, if, if they did it, we had record of it, if Steve could get it up on our parcel viewer so it, you know, there'd be another additional layer to that, that's really handy on the, on the stuff that he does have on the parcel viewer where you, you click on the zoning and boom, it maps it out and you know what's... I have to interrupt you, we have to go to that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. To that district <laughs> help. So right now, all your ideas. Uh, I, I, I can see Alan over there getting He's a little... Getting a little <laughs>
Pierce? Here. Eddie? Here. Ramsey? Here. Here. Minutes of the 2016 meeting. Do we need to read that? I'll make a motion uh, to approve the September uh, 6, 2016. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. I'll second. Eddie Kelly. There's a motion and a second. Aye. All. Belinda from Eddie. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Both same sign. Meeting on motion carried. And we will go to the 2018 budget with Alan. Okay, anybody have any uh, any questions about the uh, 2018 budget? We were, I was around. Uh, discussion of Lake Jefferson County. If you have the discussion, I'll take a motion to approve the 2018 budget. It's basically the same as last year's. Yeah, it's a dollar more than last year. It's a kind of a hold even budget. A dollar more? What's that? A dollar more? Yes, $3, actually. $3. Three more like 5000 isn't it? <laughs> no, it's uh, it, the amount that we, uh, each county is different, but the total amount that all four counties give is $3 more than last year.
And so uh, it only went up like 10 or whatever. Yeah, and so that, that saved us some money. And uh, a couple other things happened that were out of our control that saved us some money. So we had a little bit of extra money coming in to the, to the budget, so that helped quite a bit. Um, and, uh, but generally, our, our, what we're really fearing in, in public health is, is the money coming from the federal, federal voice. Uh, they gave, we got a few contracts, a few we have not seen yet, Rick, we have, uh, which is $223,000. We have no idea whether it's coming or not, so um, that would be interesting. So, um, and whether we'll have a budget come October or not, we'll, we'll see. Federal, our federal grants, which we have a lot of, are kind of up in the air right now. So, thank you. Thank you. Anything else? All right. Thank you. Thank you. you bet. Well, since Rhonda is down here, we will have an overview of the social service budget. Good morning. I'm sorry, I don't know if I did I miss. I'm sorry, I didn't know I was going to come, but um, so basically, um, our budget from 2016 to, or excuse me, 2017 to 2018 is up 2.63%. The actual dollar amount is $64,411. Um, the, for the total budget line. The salary line increase is 2.98% increase overall. Um, we, we kept, we eliminated, to do some raises, we eliminated our half-time um, child welfare supervisor, and we eliminated um, our half-time um, child welfare worker. So that, or excuse me, the transportation person. We did keep Sydney, or excuse me, um, uh, a home and community based service, um, qualified service provider in our budget. That was a position that Tanya Valandry left. She she was going to school and she got a, um, she finished her bachelor's degree and got a job in her field that she got her bachelor's degree in. So we were sorry to lose her, but we just didn't have a position open. So that position has been left open. We're thinking about, um, one of the thoughts about that position is to make it a, transportation recovery coach type person for our family members with our project at the jail and I'm going off on a little tangent so I'm sorry I'll come back to this budget. With our project at the jail we've really noticed and I mentioned this to Commissioner Lightbond and Commissioner Brown um, it's absolutely overlap people that we see down there we have seen them we've had their kids in care so um, kind of looking at that um, we cut um, about $38,000 from other areas. Um, we cut $10,000 in travel. We're just, last year we, it worked out to bring a lady in and do some consulting um, on family engagement and she offered CEUs. That was 100 bucks to get CEUs for all of the social work staff so that really saved on travel. She did about 12 or 14 CEUs so that was helpful. Not the whole $10,000, which in general we're just looking at more webinars, more, um, you know, things that we can take part in in a room downstairs in the historical room, which is helpful. Um, you know, our budget changed a lot, and I, um, I can do a whole longer presentation on that, but we are getting money. Our budget is funded at 2015 levels from the state of North Dakota, so we're getting about 1.9 some million dollars and the candy, you can chime in. What is she? 1.996. Yeah, 1.996 1. in 42. Yeah. Thank Just you. under 2 million. Yeah. So the rest. And from 2206. Right. Senate Bill 2206. Funded at 2015 levels with no inflator. So that some of the counties are really, really stri struggling. We are very lucky with our carryover. We had about, um, our carryover ended up being. About six hundred, seven hundred and some thousand dollars. I have a, um, I don't know if Candy passed that out to you. Yeah, we'll yeah. Actually, we'll okay, to okay. Actually. So we will be using that to fund our budget. So we will not be using any new mills this year, which is the really, really good news. Um, we actually came out on the good end of the um, not giving us the tax uh, buy down, property tax buy down. We only got um, 1.7. 1 1.7. It's we're getting about 1.9. Candu, on the other hand, lost about $600,000 or $300,000 on that. They got about six hundred, dollars and they're only getting about three. 
So they came out on the short end of the stick, as did, I don't know if you heard, other counties did. I know um, Burley County was really complaining about it. I didn't see their actual number breakdown. Benson. Benson, yeah. Um, so that that didn't go so well. Um, yeah, we'll be somewhere close to fairly even on the 12% that we get to the Chase out the launch. One of the things on our budget, we really were conservative. Christy and I went back and forth, her being a business person and me being, man, we could probably do that. She's like, no, very conservative that way. We, we did not. Um, revenue that we collect, we were very conservative on. So we hope to even have folks go in to 2019 with about six or seven hundred thousand dollars of carry carryover. We've talked to Candy about that. We are working on billing Medicaid for targeted case management. Um, I feel like we're ready to go. Um, that takes some really good documentation by workers and some seasons work seasoned workers that can go out and meet with a family and write notes that actually use the words you need to bill that half hour, that hour time to um, case management in for the federal government. So we're really working on that. I think that we're coming along and we'll hopefully we can fill about, well, conservatively 50, but maybe even more. So we'll see how that goes, $50,000, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it's a, it, theoretically, I'd like to build a position and a half to pay for a, um, a worker to work with people to keep kids out of foster care. It's backwards, you know, they pay you a lot of money when you put a kid in foster care. We get, they pay the whole bill. But they do not pay the bill if you work in a family to keep a kid out of foster care or to work with a family to give wraparound services in their home or in their community. So that's a, something that I'm hopeful. There was um, a federal bill to take a look at that. California and Massachusetts just really did not like it because they put a lot of money into their group home, state-run group homes and it would totally, they would have to shut down. And when you depend on putting kids in care like North Dakota does at a much smaller level than Massachusetts or California, you don't want to switch the funding to in-home care. It's just, it was, so it didn't fly. So, but I think that'll come in the future. Hopefully in my lifetime, we'll see that because it absolutely makes no sense. So getting back to our budget, um, there are no inflators. So, you know, we really are trying to be really, really conservative and not use any extra mill levies for 2019 too. So we're really going to hold the line on that and try to use our carryover for the next two years along with our, our, our revenue. Also, um, we bill, remember, our revenue for targeted case management. We also do quite fifty to $60,000 for other counties when, when they need help. Um, it doesn't seem very neighborly, but with our neighbor, Benson, it, Got, got to be a lot of extra help where we started billing for our time just because they couldn't fill positions which in, in the past we've just done that tit for tat they've helped us out but it got to be kind of went over the line and so hopefully we'll have um, enough revenue and that's our goal is to not use any um, no levies in 2019 either so that what do you think that figure was approximately over the course of the year that we built them? Um, oh, close to 50, 50 60 grand. 50 grand. Yeah. yeah. In other years, we were kind of doing that for rather. Well, yeah, we hadn't done as much. They had, they did fill a position for a long time. So, yeah. For example, we did Nelson County's um, child care licensing for around three or four months. Normally, we would just go over and do a conflict of interest for them, but we billed them and they paid us because they didn't intend on filling that. They really needed to save some money on their budget, and so we just did their their um, child care licensing. Same with Rolette. Benson County, we did all of their child care licensing for about almost close to six or seven months. So we went ahead and did... Um, Jody Pike is our child care licensor, and she's been here, she's been here with our agency close to 22 years. So her salary plus benefits, working out for an hourly wage, we, we charged them a pretty good chunk of change, but she did it faster than them hiring a new worker. And so it worked out for them too. So they understood it. Yeah, they were they They're were very right. fine with that. Yep. Well, it, for them it's cheaper than hiring a full-time yeah. employee, and if it doesn't add an undue burden to us, it never hurts to help out people or else we can keep everybody's. Yeah. 
structure. Yeah, you can contract somebody to yeah, dodge a lot of benefits. Yeah. yeah. Plus, it, plus it helps our budget in the end, too, because we're getting a little bit back. Absolutely. Maybe a little more of the time. But for a number of years, we were kind of doing that for nothing. Yeah, we just would go back and forth. It has never been this long. The last two years have been up just a lot. It's very, very difficult to get folks to come and do child welfare in rural North Dakota. We're really struggling as a whole. Oh. Um, UND stepped up and tried to do some work with training, and I'm sorry for No, that's what I was just going to say. I mean, we have problems keeping people, you know. Uh, it's just tough to find really good quality workers and keep it here. I mean, it's just, it, it's hard for everybody. So yeah. uh, we're going to see, unfortunately, I think, more where we're going to have kind of helping out back and forth and when people, you know, it's going to be longer gaps between finding people that are qualified to fill positions that would assume just kind of not happens. I think too it's an interesting part of Senate Bill 2206 is a study to see how we're really not sure what we're studying, but there, um, I have a meeting tomorrow. Chris Jones, the new Department of um, Human Services Executive Director, has apparently chosen a group of folks to, to help him study that. It's getting late. We're kind of like, well, we need to get going. So I think counties, um, I think it's going to be very difficult. Some of the smaller counties are really um, frustrated, I would say, and really um, scared is kind of a strong word, that they're going to be taken over by larger counties. And they absolutely fight tooth and nail to have their own office, their own. It's been a... It, so there'll have to be some give and take there. Um, you know, some of the commentary and some of the um, information we've got from Christopher Jones is he looks at being more cost effective, streamlining services. So definitely we're gonna have to start looking at that. We do all go all the way up to Rolla, I was gonna mention, to help them out with a couple childcare, because all of their staff have children in the daycare center at Rolla, the only daycare center in the town. So we have to do the licensure. So. Um, I'm trying to think of something else with our budget. Um, I was going to ask one question. Sure. At, at our meeting, it was the last week of our day, I can't remember. Um, we talked about the question of are we going to be able to pull, if, say we run under budget to 18, if we have uh, you know, a carryover, are we going to be able to pull that back into the county general? Because we, we had the discussion, and, and just to fill everybody in, basically, if you look at uh, the sheets that were given, I don't know if you guys have in front of you, but, we had a seven hundred eighty-one thousand dollars carryover coming into this year. Uh, eight fifty-seven is the projected, about eight fifty-eight going into next year, uh, and we're going to need three hundred sixty-eight thousand of that to balance the budget. Then, so that means it gives us four eighty-nine left over. Well, the question is, uh, will the state be able to use those or take those funds back at the end of nineteen, and are we better off taking that whole dollar allotment? and rolling it back to the general, just letting it sit there, and then we can dole it out as we need it in 18 and 19. So that we don't have money sitting in the carryover at social services, because that way we control the money. And if if we happen to run over budget or something, unfortunately, this next year, we could always roll a little bit more money out and make an amendment if need be. And that, that's one thought process, and I tend to go on that. I'm thinking I'm real worried that at the end of 20, is it at the end of 2019? I get confused a little bit. The state would consider that to be all of their money if you have carryover because they've been funding your budget. So I think that's definitely something we could consider doing. The 2206 does allow for $500,000 carryover because um, we have over, we have a two, over a $2 million budget and that was... Um, yeah, we just had two questions at our last meeting basically was, was will we be able to dump carryover at the end of 18 say we run under budget? So, you know, because like this year we're running approximately $75,000 under budget, so will we be able to dump that back into the county general split up so that it doesn't sit there and then the state takes it at the end of 18, if possibly? And, uh, you know, is the state going to take that remaining fund balance at the end of 19? And it sounds to us like they're going to. <laughs> at least that's the answer. We're kind of getting it. This, the question is, will we be able to roll funds back at the end of 18? So I'm sitting there going, I don't think we want to have, take the chance that we have any fund balance sitting out there that we can't possibly take back when we can just set it in general fund to give basically a number and then we can roll it back over again. That way we we don't risk leaving a bunch of rent and money, taxpayer money sitting out there. And then the state's saying, well, hey, 
And that was really a point of contention. It was very difficult to sit and listen to the legislative committee talk about the carryover because it was almost like they thought we were somehow trying to rip off taxpayers and levying more than we needed. And the reality is, if you talk to anybody that manages an over a $2 million budget, five hundred that is not an unusual amount of money to carry over, but the, the kind of the general consensus was when you listen to the conversations, like, what are they doing? How do they have this much carryover? It's like, well, when you have you sit with three positions that you can't fill, or you it three three um, three six eight months at a time, or you, you try to save money because you see you're having a lot of travel time because you have sixty kids in foster care, so you don't fill a half time position. It 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 adds up. So. And then you get more revenue. You possibly we build um, for home and community-based services quite a bit more revenue than we projected. We don't always know that. B in um, the home HCBS is very very good at um, you know in 15-minute increments and for her hour of time she's very she's very skilled. She's done a long time at getting lots of billable hours in. She is on the move and she keeps her time. She's amazing. So we we build a lot of um, time with folks where she's going in and doing baths and um, that type of thing. So it was difficult to listen to that because when you try to, it, it was like we were being looked at with the first trying to save money and it's a longer word, it's not even legislative come from, you know? Yeah. Or small county, not a big, very big budget for more social services. It's not a large client so. I mean, it always comes down to scale, right? So on the $2 million budget, $500,000 is 12.5% of your budget. And if I could plan a year ahead, my own personal budget, no. be within 12.5%, I'd feel pretty good about myself. Yeah. Uh, that was not looked at favorably. Um, and, you know, it was it was Burley, Rams. It was the bigger county. It was exactly that. It was the bigger counties with the bigger budgets. And so it was frustrating. Yeah. When I talked to Candy about fund carryovers, too, and, and you know, I've done some research on it, and they usually say somewhere between 15 and 18, 15 and 20 percent is kind of where you want to carry, so I don't think we're out of the ballpark where we're at. I mean, you know, sometimes you just run over your budget, so and then you want to have a little carryover just in case you run into a situation where you need a little additional funding. Even, even with state on it's state. Yeah, and I, I know one of the, there, there were other legislators that very much understood that, but that drove the conversation for over two of the sessions I sat in. It was like, so frustrating. But, uh, you know, I'm optimistic, cautiously optimistic. Um, I'm hopeful we'll find some new ideas with how to be more efficient with social services. Um, I know he's made, uh, the Department of Human Services has had pretty much a mass exodus in the um, economic assistance area and we're in the middle of a new rollover with, um, it's called Spaces, it's a new computer system that we waited for several years, they're, you know, six more months, six more months. So it's it's interesting, um, he, he's new to human services, so we'll see. Any more questions for Robert? Thank you, Ron. Thank you so much. Thank you. We have one and one and a half minutes. One and a half. <laughs> well, let's do one item under new business. That's not to waste any time. Uh, request from Safe House for abused families. We have a letter.
it's, you know, I, I think they're just like anyone else, like Gal was talking about the federal funds on grants and things are starting to drop out. And, yeah, it's getting tougher and tougher to run it. It's, it's something that's needed. So, you know, oh. You don't have a line item for this at all? Miscellaneous general school. That's what well, in, in years, years in years before, I think, didn't it come out of the Army's budget? Uh, or was that something else? Oh, we have no reference what the city did, huh? Alternative letter. 
list, our agenda there, the third item is uh, the meeting with local government at the NACO convention was changed to Tuesday morning. I think I told you Monday, Candy, but it's okay. Tuesday morning at 9.20, October 10th. Got us out of the afternoon then. Yeah. Good deal. <laughs> Actually, the meeting was after the convention ended. Yeah. Good deal. Good job. And I'll, I'll, if you forget that time, I can remind you of where it's going. And my last item there, we did traffic counts on 14th Street uh, by the terminal, west of the, east of the terminal. And they were up this time when the Highway 20 was closed. They went from average of 325 in July to 612. And since they've opened up Highway 20 again, they're back down to normal. But just so you know, it almost, almost doubled when they had Highway 20 closed. And I also did notice that there's four to five buses. I mean, this thing counts buses, too, by the actual hits. So there's like two buses in and out to travel that road every day, or two and a half buses. I see you're counting it now, too, again. I took them down last Thursday. Oh. Any other questions on that? Any idea what the... I thought I had heard that they have a, a longer closing period coming up on College Drive. Or I know Next 19, year, I believe it is. Oh, they're closed in 19. I know 19 is closed today. That's the real some uh, utility work. 19 is going to be closed through October, they said. Yeah, that's no. a, it's going to be a long closure. Right. But then they're taking the stop sign out on 20 on the pass through now, so you're going to be able to get through north and south without the slow down, but you're not going to be able to jump off the load 18 out then anyway. No. Be quite, they said they had to do well, yeah, a bunch of underground work, I guess. Yeah. Storm sewer and all the electrical work for the lights and signal lights and overhead lights and uh, curb and gutter, so they did a big job there. And one other thing I was going to mention, I was going to look at the prices of new ditch mowers. I got like $75,000 budget, but I don't even know what they cost. I'm going to be looking into what costs of new ditch mowers are. Ours are uh, 10 years old. So, but I'll keep you up to speed on that before I make any decisions. You got it for this year? Yeah. yeah. That's all I have. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. So the water board came in. We can skip to the water board. Good morning. Good morning. A couple things to report. Some usual things. Um, working on a few dike and drain complaints. Uh, nothing big to report there. Maybe a big thing here is is that. With uh, our attorney's advice, Bruce Gibbons, and also Cameron Siller's advice from Cavalier County Water Resource District. Since Ramsey County and Cavalier County have a different policy on how to replace culverts, uh, and instead of asking them to go by our rules or asking Ramsey County to go by their rules, we agreed with the attorneys to have an agreement that we're doing things different. And in Cavalier County, when a culvert has to be replaced, the cost is paid 60% by, uh, uh, by the assessment district or the water board, and 40% by the, the, county, uh, the county funds. Whereas in Ramsey County, any culvert 36 inches and larger is paid for by county commission funds. So we agreed that um, when something has to be replaced in Cavalier County, that the uh, Starkweather funds, Starkweather Cooley funds will pay for that, and then they will assess a little bit more to the Cavalier County 
landowners to reimburse um, the Stark with a Cooley funds um, the next year. It's a little confusing there, but instead of asking either county to change what they've been doing, we agreed to do it this way. So nothing's changed for Ramsey County. Dan, is that about correct there? Okay. Um, other than that, um, we've agreed to uh, assess the uh, start with a coolie, 50 cents for maintenance for this next year, which is what we did last year. We voted this morning to assess the Hamer Sullivan drain, a dollar an acre, like we did last year, to complete the work going up to the county line. And the Grand Harbor Dry Lake Assessment District, Dan is meeting with their uh, committee in the coming weeks. And we voted this morning to uh, go with whatever that committee recommends. So, uh, a number of other things, but it, they're minor. So, anything, anything, any questions for us? Jim, have you guys had a discussion on this uh, notice from Army Corps about that mitigation site up in north, northern part of Ramsey County? We did not discuss it this morning. Um, this is from the Army Corps of Engineers. They're looking at a wetland mitigation site. Um, and it's, it says it's uh, north and approximately six miles north and four miles east of Starkweather. Uh, 80 acres. Uh, the site will yield 25.93 credits under the mitigation. Interagency inter guidance for mitigation bank sponsors. Um, and the sponsor is Ducks Unlimited. Kevin, did you have any more information about that? Or? The adjacent landlords were had some concerns is where I got the information. So it's going to affect the, how the uh, water drains in that area. Was on their <clears throat> so as far as I know, they were going to write letters to these private individuals were going to write letters to the Corps of Engineers not in favor of the project. That's all I know about it. And Jeff, you said there was 25 credits, is that right? 25.93 credits, <coughs> uh, 80 acre site. Kevin, can you give us an example of a project the county has done and they used the credits? Oh, uh, yeah, but Ramsey County 10, when we were fighting over mitigation here. That would have been a good example. Which one? Uh, Ramsey County 10, when we raised that one. Okay. We did not end up using a bank, but that's where we could have bought credits at that bank. You didn't buy them, though. Yeah, you buy them for the price was big dollars. Yeah, like, yeah. It's like, you remember approximately what the dollars were? It's generally three to four times what normal land prices are. Do you remember how many we were asking for in that project? One very many, three or four. Yeah. I don't remember. It wasn't, it's usually not very many that you know. Yeah, just wanted everybody to understand how it works. On a road project, <coughs> your ditches don't get that big, so the acres don't have that pass. But which one of these mouse works for that whole of the parcel? I think they're both good. And he, you can look at, um, you know, there's awful lot of wetlands up in up in that area, um, but they're gonna. It looks like they're gonna block off a drain coming through there, and so that's where that concern from the adjacent landowners is coming into play. What were the, from Stark with their what direction was it? Six thing? north or east, Jim. Yes, yeah. It's right off the 20 curve, a couple right. miles east. So if you go. Yeah, it's right up yeah. there, off 32 area. Yeah. What was the name of the one mile itself? It would be right out of the 20 curve here. Roll back that way. Go the other way. I, I think that's probably about it, that section four. Find the curve of um, twenty. No, we passed the curve of twenty. Section oh, section five. You're so close. To, oh, there it is. Okay. I think we're right. Go to, go to section here, five. Maybe. Well, there we go. Five, right here. Yeah. And then it's the. Uh, Coolie, huh? Yeah. Oh, there it is. Right there. 
five right here at four or two. Verse five. Don't yeah. hear that. So it's uh, I think it's the east half. So the southeast quarter. Right here, this is Trainer, John Trainer. Yeah, that's the one. There we go. It's the whole east. It's the east half of section five. The whole half section? No, it's an eighty. It's an eighty. It looks like it must be the southeast of the of the east half of the southeast. Yeah. Um. Kind of tough to tell here on this picture. The picture looks a little different. Is there federal easements on it? East to east half of the northeast quarter. There you go. Say, say that again, Jeff. East what? East half of the northeast quarter. Oh, it's over there. Three is. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's over that section? Yeah. We don't say northeast.
vacancy Thursday on the 7th. Well, couldn't you make Ducks Unlimited make a ditch uh, around it? I think you can do that. So it doesn't depend on how bad they want it. Carry it around the right? I think as a county, if we're interested in sending a letter not in favor, that's probably all we can do. But maybe it should come from the I don't know. I just stay out of the legal. <laughs> that's why we should have our state's attorney involved with it. Thursday's a deadline on that letter? Must, must be postmarked by September 7th. We could get that letter to Carrie and have her uh, write up a letter for against that project, that purchase. I guess that's probably what we could do with Ramsey County and the water board would want to sign on to that. I don't imagine you have enough for a quantum to get a vote. Show it shows here the, the plugs on it that they're going to create. You want to show that? Uh, You need the landowner to send in one? The Jason landowner? Yeah, Jason landowner's already okay. work. Looks like it sure does. Whoever got one of these Pressure letters just look over. Yeah. Where are they going to put a plug? I wonder if the township got a, a letter or a notice? That's who contacted me. It was the okay. township chair. You guys got a no notice. Did Marlene share that with you guys? Send it that was laying on the table there. I guess that's how that core logo. Did you see it in? I guess it wasn't on the agenda. I was, we missed it. Should I see if my crew is over there yet? Good idea. I would say so. Judged by that map, it looks like they're just closing off drains that are cut between those sluice that we created before the restoring wetlands back to way It doesn't look like it's going to affect any other by this map. You'd have to pick it up to throw it on Well, the way you get affected if you get so full and it backs it up like that. But they get some more over here. Yeah, yeah. That's really confusing.
glad we didn't have it on our agenda. But I know that you know, our attorney says if someone has a ditch you know, through their land and they don't want to maintain it, or you know, it's naturally silted in, so it's backing up water, I mean, you can't, you can't make them clean it. Yeah, water laws is, of, of my knowledge of it, talking with a couple of attorneys that I trust for it's usually a little bit on the low end wins when it comes to elevation. How's that worked out for you in the past, Dan? What's that? You guys on the low end win. I'm uh, talking when it comes to drainage. Yeah. <laughs> Top of the hill versus the bottom of the hill. Yeah. Which doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah. It doesn't make a lot of sense. But. All right. Uh, it was it was something that I brought up to the commissioners, and we thought that we should have a discussion with you guys about it anyway. Well, I mean, I know ducks on a bit. They they like to maintain the positive impact. Right. If they're impacting somebody, it looks to me like the guy on the north side is the one. That's, the guy on the on the on the east side doesn't look to me like the water goes that way. The guy on the north, you know. Maybe they would make him a ditch around it so they can keep their wetlands and mitigate it and, uh, and let his water pass through. That's a possibility, but it's getting a little late in the game for that. Yeah. I guess the way it sounds. A, this is a concern that it's coming this way now. Yeah, it looks like that goes through, yeah. And then put those plugs in and stop that. Favor of it. 
basically. Are you folks about done here? Can we get no, uh, we Kevin can. to come to our meeting? Or? Oh, okay. Yeah, Kevin can go. Do we need to get on the uh, call road agreement? Oh, okay. I can come back to the. Carrie's not here, so. I'll step back to Kevin. She's got that cold road agreement. She, yeah. she drew up something, but... So we're just going to fund it? Yeah, but Kevin, Kevin hasn't gotten anything. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, being so we started on the request from Safe House, we never did come up with uh, what we were... Oh, we did. Did we? Yeah, we put it for the... Oh, yeah. 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 That's right. Then we're going to invite them to come to speak. Yeah. Okay, that's right. And it was part, well, there was a grant program that went through Lonnie's budget in 2016, but then she turned in a letter for funds for, and it was too late for like an, an additional 5000 So there was, there's nothing that's been paid this year to them. So do we, we still have the grant then? No, um, Carrie, Carrie, had, um, Carrie had talked about that, that it was going through, it was going through a different county's state's attorney. Okay. Well, it'll buy us some time at least to, yep. to discuss it and see how yep. it works. Then. And I'll check into it a little bit more and find out what the city did. Okay, and going to unfinished business and the cold road agreement, we're going to just wait until Carrie comes to the next meeting on yeah, that. Until we get more information. Okay. <coughs> it brings us to discussion on human resource.
two hours and then time enough before the month. Yeah, I'd, I'd like I'd like some time before after we get done so we can discuss all the right. all, all the individuals and then maybe if we're comfortable at that point we can make the decision or we can just push it to the next meeting and give ourselves some extra time to think about it as well. That works for me. <coughs> So I'll turn that into a motion. I'd like to make a motion that uh, we invite the applicants to an interview process set for uh, 3 p.m. Uh, what's the next commission meeting date? 19th. On the 19th. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. And motion carried. Discussion on home rule. <laughs> I don't know if Lucas has anything to leave with, but I, I would say one thing that I, after our meeting last time, I re uh, quickly recognized that we never did make a motion to advertise for people to put on the committee. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> so we need to get that done so, so we can figure out, I mean, okay. we kind of had a framework for what we wanted to do as a, you know, size-wise and all that, but we should advertise for people too that are interested. Uh, so we can kind of get it shaped up. Okay. Yeah, I did, I did talk to quite a few people about it uh, and suggested that if they were interested uh, to either send a nomination letter or a letter of interest to Candy. Okay. Um, but I don't know if Candy received any. I also received a couple of calls from interested people, uh, which I also suggested that they do that. So I'm a little surprised that there hasn't been any, but I guess they're not that interested. <laughs> but yeah, we should probably have a motion to advertise then, right? Yeah. I'll, I'll move that we advertise. I mean, and then how many people do we want to put on again? Well, we, we empowered a committee for nine, nine. and we appointed four. We were going to take yep. nominations for the next five. Okay, so I think we should put that in the advertisement too that we're we're uh, we're looking uh, for five individuals that are interested in sitting on the uh, researching the, the home rule charter. We should the advertisement. Second. There's a motion and a second. Do we yeah, still want to uh, stay with the the two commissioners on that? That was yeah. the next thing I was going to ask you. The, you know. Uh, it was brought up that with commissioners on there, they're going to have they have influence on that committee, and they'll have a vote on it. Plus, they'll have a vote on the commission as well. So, do we want to have that more of a community citizen-driven committee, and get with the direction from the commission? I guess my only fear with that is that. We'll end up with a situation like we've ended up with the last two times, where nothing will actually come of it in the end. Um, well, that's not because of the committee, it's because of the commission itself. Yeah. Well, right, that the, the commission didn't feel comfortable in those times to bringing it to a vote, you know, and, and so if we can have some commissioners on it, I think we might be able to avoid that situation. But. I mean, I guess I don't really have extremely strong feelings so long as there is a committee. Yeah, I guess uh, whether uh, whether we empower two commissioners to sit on the committee or just as advisory members, I'm going to, I'm going to the meeting regardless. So. Right, right. Uh, you know, it, it, you know, we we can be there because uh, you know, obviously anybody can be yeah, there. Open to the public. The, the, the one thing I would, I mean, I can see the advantages and the disadvantages. Right. The one thing I would say is that when this is all said and done, if we come to a conclusion as a home rule committee that we should try to get a home rule charter, at the end of the day, whether you talk about selling it or whatnot, it's going to be the five of us here. If we decide that we want to go forward with asking for the home rule, we're going to be the ones that are going to be asking for the public's yes vote. So I mean, it doesn't whether it's an advisory capacity at that level or uh, just you know has they done in the past sending out uh, or not sending out but uh, crafting uh, our thoughts on what we would like to see in it previous to the committee meeting. Uh, I guess you know I guess it takes one half does the other in that situation. But at the end of the day, you know, it, it has to be 
document that we're all comfortable with right. before we approve asking them. So you can step both ways. You know, I think we need the commissioners involved because we need them to uh, probably put in the direction, you know, getting accomplished one way or the other, whether it's yes or no. And that, no. that's my thought on it. And um, I, I think that will help. I, I don't think they, I think the committee can come with a recommendation, you know, you know, that we feel, you know, the commission should do this or come with nothing and let the commissioners as a whole decide which way to go, whether we should have a vote or not. Yep. Yeah, put the pros and cons down on it. But it, 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 it was just a concern do. that was brought up, so I thought I'd pass it along. And mm -hmm. the other thing is, and just as, a, as an aside, neither you know, for nor against the argument, but you know, the commission is one of the things that could change as a result of the home rule charter. Mm -hmm. You know, there could be three commissioners, there could be seven, uh, and as such, I think that you know, I don't think there could be seven. Under five. Under under state state yeah. oh, sorry. Three or five. Three or five. But so because of that, I mean, we stand as interested parties as well. Right. Um, yep. I think we're all right. I, I, yeah. you know, see where it goes. We're probably a big one. Oh yeah. That being said, we're also we're only two of nine. Yeah. So we can right. we can throw out ideas and people can tell us we're idiots. Yeah. Well, that that was why <laughs> I thought it's quite possible they will. So. That's why we should have five members of the committee yeah. so that they always represent yeah. an outsizing vote. That, that was what I liked. Yeah. yeah. So uh, e even if everybody that's from the courthouse, so to speak, is on board together on the same process, if the citizens, the five, are still all waiting for it, that point, right? and that's, so the citizens are going to have the say that it all comes down to the end anyway. Like I said, if they, if the committee has come to the facts, yeah. you know, the pros and the cons of this issue, and then let the commission decide what to do, whether there should be a vote or not. I don't know how they did it last time, the last two times, but I would imagine that's probably how they did it. But they not only think they ever put a committee together. Yeah, they did. They did? Yeah, there was a committee. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they put. Yeah, they, 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 they had a committee. They put the committee together, they drafted the document. The first time they drafted the document. Oh, that's right. And then they actually asked the commission to yeah, put it on the ballot, the commission decided not to. The second time they, they went through again, looked at the document, made some changes, redrafted, I believe, and then they, they came with a recommendation to not put it on the ballot because they feel we needed it at that point in time. Yeah. I'm wondering if we shouldn't uh, copy some of that stuff. You know, I, you have a copy of that one book and. I, I, I think that's where you start, yeah. You, you, you basically you take the control. previous document and you go from there, basically. Well, and I think that that will, that will be the agenda for the first couple of yeah. committee meetings anyway, is going through what had been done previously. Um, yeah. I'm comfortable advertising for the five Three. members at large. Okay. Just one thing I was going to add. To make sure the committee reports back to the commission every time you meet. Yeah. Bring a report or send a report or something yeah, I, so we can yeah. follow along. And I think that's another advantage of having a couple of commissioners on it too, is that you know we'll be there the whole time seeing the process happen, so we'll be able to keep everybody informed as to what's going on. And, mm -hmm. and uh, like I said, whether we send commissioners on it as voting members or not, I'm still going to go to the meeting because this is obviously a huge undertaking. Right. Going to have to be informed. So. Go ahead, Jeff. Sorry, sorry I interrupted you. No. No, I, I'm, I'm comfortable with the vote, so we can proceed with that, I think. Okay, so we're going to put an advertisement out and we'll move forward. Did we vote on it? Uh, yeah, I voted. No. Yeah. Do we have no. a motion? We have a motion. I made the motion to okay. second in the vote. So and we have a discussion. Okay. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. On that motion. Can I make one more statement on that? Just, uh, I, I think it would uh, behoove us as well to come up uh, for like our next meeting for all of us to kind of sit down and figure out separately what we would like to see the committee, you know, what, what the, the bullet points of what do we want to see them accomplish. Uh, and then kind of get together at our next meeting and craft that as a list. Yeah. And then get it so we kind of have it. I mean, we have some time, but we should really start thinking about, you know, what do we... What we, you know, kind of like they've done in the past. We have an idea so we can kind of craft a list. So once the committee is empowered and we get the people in position, we can get the ground running that basically. Right. Okay. Moving down to new business. Approve the 2018 preliminary budget. Before we do that, I 
Jesse Rocks, who are just here to talk about your budget? Mm, no. well, I'm, here, I'm, I'm here to help all of the portfolio aspects. Oh, okay. Thing, so. I just thought it said on the desk. Okay. okay, we're going to leave that to the end for the water board and everything, too. So, then, um, then we'll move down. We'll move down to approving the signing papers for Sheriff's House overhang. So we're, we're going to do that? No, we're going to do that last because the water board's coming back. Water board has to give us their budget too. Yeah, they haven't showed us their budget yet. They have them. So are we paying for the overhang change then, correct? It is, all, all, it is all through a grant. Okay. Um, when Mary Lundy came in a while back. Yeah. Um, this is State Historical Society grant money then. Yep. And the. Um, I remember I was she, tried, she tried to explain to me the difference between this grant and the other grant money, something. Um, this money, because it's a, either a CDBG grant, whatever. The money goes through the city. I saw that. Yeah. yeah. That's why I was kind of yeah. interested in, in the documentation that we received. That the city has to approve it, and then we have to approve it as well, being that we own the property. Yeah. But the city has to approve the actual grant application. Yeah. Then. Okay. That's where I was getting a little. And it's the difference on. between the two grants. And, there, and there's no match involved or anything no. like that. Basically, it's we're just approving. Them to, we're approving them to do the change on the facilities that we're. I'll make a motion to approve signing the papers then. So there's a, there's a motion and a second to sign the papers for the sheriff's house overhang. All in favor, say that by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Being done. Motion carried. That I would say to anybody that hasn't been in there. I actually went in there the other day. It's been a long time since I was at the school. It's awesome. Go check it out. Approved letter of transfer. Move to approve. Second. Any motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed same sign. Being that motion carried. Well, we move down to report on portfolios, which is kind of where we are on it.
on getting the healthcare administrator in. We did get uh, an individual that has had agreed to help us out uh, and has done, she worked with us previously in, in somewhat of the same capacity. And so that was the primary and the biggest objective that we needed to accomplish. So this last Friday, they came and actually delivered the order of closure and the order of suspension for the, the, the closure. Uh, and we have 30 days to continue to work on improving these areas that they've identified that we need to work on. Uh, in their inspection, uh, they had found that we were not in compliance with 40 of the jail standards. Uh, in my review, I haven't gone through thoroughly the, the inspection results yet, but I've gone through it enough to know that over half of those standards are based off our policies needing to be updated, uh, with which we've already started to work on it in regards to transitioning over to Lexapol, uh, which is uh, a policy and procedure uh, online based where they are <coughs> based off of both state standards, federal standards, as well as best practices. Uh, our policy is over 30 years old, and the updates that have been done to it in, in that time haven't been sufficient. So. Uh, right now, uh, I'm confident with the, the changes that we've made in our leadership within the jail to, that we're going to start make, seeing more progression. Uh, we've had, I've been in my position for just over a year. Uh, when I got into my role, uh, I knew what I was getting into. There was a lot that needed to be done. I think we have made some good strides in the time that I've been there. But I also think that this is an indicator of how far we have yet to go. If you, anyone has any questions or Steve would like to add anything. I'm confident we're going to be fine. I mean, we're, we're on the right track. It's just going to take a little bit of effort. And then we had, I was at the meeting with the uh, DOCR people on Friday as well. And uh, I think, you know, they're, it, it, it's serious, but I think we've made great strides in the last short run. I have all the confidence that we're going to be just fine. I mean, we're going to, we need some work to do. But that's our emotion, and the things that we need to do immediately are, are mostly done already, uh, or in the process of being done. So I have, I'm on, you know, we're, we, we will come out of this fine. And then we have now a roadmap to where to move forward with this to, to make sure our facility gets back to where it should be. And one of the things we're going to be doing to ensure that there's act, you know, that we're doing what needs to be done is we're going to be establishing a weekly meeting where Steve, and, I, and Ed, I believe Lenny Ken is going to be coming in to attend those meetings to get regular updates as far as what we have accomplished and what we're doing to make sure that we're getting things addressed as needed. With respect to this uh, notice of closure, order of closure, um, is that contingent, is it being lifted, is that contingent on another full inspection? There will be multiple inspections. It's actually in place for a year. Uh, to where they can come, they'll be coming in throughout that year and doing multiple inspections. I would expect unannounced during that time frame. Plus, we'll also maintain constant communication with them, letting them know as well as far as what we've done, uh, providing documentation for trainings and for some of the steps that we've taken to address their concerns. So we won't be able to house any federal prisoners for a year. I. I, I'm going to be asking a little bit more questions as I go through this to try and identify. I think once we get in compliance with uh, the jail standards, that they'll, they'll lift that restriction off of us. It's just that the, the order will be open for a year to where they could come back in and make any other changes that they needed. But I, I'm, I'm going to be looking to get clarification on that. What's that do for a uh, revenue stream? Well, and that's something that we've kind of identified already, uh, is that, you know, uh, we historically have relied on our contract beds to help us you know, finance the facility. Uh, we've already worked on or addressed it and have cut reduced staffing levels to help accommodate for that. Uh, one of the things that we'll have to do as we go through the policies is to do another staffing plan, uh, which will, because right now with our, the most recent staffing plan that was done, we have to have a minimum of three officers on duty at all times to of our policies. So we'll have to conduct another staffing plan to see if we can reduce that to where maybe during down times we, the sergeant would have the opportunity to send somebody home to try and reduce more labor costs. Well, I, I think in, my, in our discussion on Friday with the meeting, I think the main reason that our contract uh, inmates were pulled was because of the medical reason. 
they weren't having, they have to have, there's a, you have to have an intake uh, exam and, and some of that, and that wasn't being, we didn't have anybody. Now that I think that we've worked with the, with the, the person that we've got that's helping us out, uh, it, I believe as of last report, it was going to be, we were back to 100% square as of yesterday, uh, back to where we need to be. So, I mean, already that's already corrected. And I think that's the main hurdle that I think once we approve documentation that that is up and running, that they hopefully will reinstate our ability to have federal in, or our contract inmates. I think that was the main hurdle why that got pulled. Just you know, like the policy issues wasn't the main. Well, I think it was the medical was the main. And then now that we have that kind of up and rolling already, you know, we're obviously got that done. You know, I think that's going to be the big hurdle that they should hopefully. Get of the okay to bring those back in as ASAP. And go ahead. I'm oh, sorry. Just no. as a as a worst case, in case uh, any of us are asked about it, what happens if we fail to meet the order of closure requirements? Some will close down the jail. Close then we'll fully. Have to find, yep. Yeah. Then we'll have to find. It'll be the jail that will close down, and then we'll have to look for other options for housing the offender. And then after that point, what would be the process of reopening the LEC? I mean, if it were to happen, what would that process look like? Meet the standards. Yeah, it'd be going through and continuing to work on trying to get in compliance with all the standards. There's a number of standards we won't come in compliance with. We'll have to submit variances for based off the physical structure, but those are pretty minor things. Just what I was going to say was, I was at the meeting on Friday afternoon with Owen. This Warlinger from Bismarck, from the Department of Corrections, he's been, he worked for the federal prisons for four years, so you can imagine how old he is. And he spent 32 months in Ward County, in the jail up there, straightening that out. And he seems to be very fair. You know, get it right, pay attention to detail, but get it right. Get your manuals in place, and I think you'll be fine. So he led us through the process that afternoon. Um, Steve was there, I was there, Rob was on the phone, Peggy was there, um, Dan Kraft and Jerry are the captain out there now. So he's more than willing to help us and show us what to do. The manuals, he said, use Ward counties. I wrote them. Well, that's kind of a dead giveaway. If you use their manuals, they're going to work. So, um, these are things you've got to clean up. And I think, like Rob says, with the leadership we have out there now, I think it's going to be all right. So, there's no guarantee, but the lack of the medical administrator and the nurse, you know, we were behind on um, making assessments of the prisoners. That concerned him a lot. One of the words he had for me, he says, was the county's liability. The county's liability. Well, identities are involved. Mm -hmm. And he's concerned with that. He shared that on the phone with me when he called me initially. And, and we have to be aware of that. You know. But they, we feel we're on the right track. And uh, as far as Revenue, I guess, we're downsizing the staff from 14 to 12 in our budget. And uh, that should help considerably. It's uh, something we're going to continue to work on. And all jails are that way. He said work County with a way bigger mass, way bigger mass. But like I said, he spent 32 months there. So I asked him if he wanted to come here, and he says, no, there's no need. You have a good enough administrator, it should be able to be done. So. I guess I just want to speak on behalf of a lot of the people in this community that I've talked to, which is to say uh, we have a long way to go to earn the respect back of this community, and we have not done very much to prove uh, that we can operate in the way that, that a correction, you know, a corrections unit needs to operate. Um, and so I would encourage you, uh, as, as the director, 
that we attempt to establish this, or rather reestablish this place as, as a, a standard of excellence, not just meeting standards, because as long as we continue to skip this stone across just above failing, one of those times that stone is going to sink below the water. And I hope it's not this time. Uh, but I, I really think that we need to do everything in our power to show the people of this community that they don't have to feel bad about the fact that the LEC is here. Um, and so I know that that's not anything that's actionable, uh, but I felt I feel that it needs to be said. So I, I appreciate the good work that you are doing and continue to do and encourage you uh, to keep seeking excellence wherever it can be found. I think one comment that Mr. Werlinger made on Friday, I think this commission needs to hear. And that's the fact that he says, they are not out here to close our doors. They are not here to close us. They're here to help us correct the issues and get back on track and build our program. I think that's, that, yeah, that was his words. I really, I, I on the actually, one other thing he added is that uh, Birch, the uh, head of the Department of Corrections down there, she told him to go up there and keep it open. So they are not trying to shut us yeah. down. This is a uh, uh, well, this is one of the the only avenue in the century that they have to do this. So that's why it's done. Um, but they are not trying to shut us. I mean, they are trying to help. They're they're right. they're not trying to close our doors. So it's not like the wolves knocking at the door and saying, "Hey, you know, they they will help us if we need." And and you know, we're gladly be uh, looking for that. I'm sure. So. Rob said earlier, I think we're all familiar with Steve Ingen, that have been on here for a while, but he retired Thursday, and his sporting year is his replacement. But he's a very fair person. But he's, I don't know if I said, but he spent 40 years in the federal prison system. So he knows what he's doing, there's no question. But, and he had a lot of confidence. Give all the staff confidence that it can be done. So, but I'm glad we can catch it in time. So. Can either of you uh, speak to the the report out last week about the people being uh, picked up for detox and the city's position on the policy on the LEC? Well, one of the jail standards is that. Uh, any detox that comes into the correctional facility has to be medically cleared before we can accept them. So that means that they're going to the emergency room and going through a screening process, which is running about $1,500, uh, before we can even accept them. So with the number of detoxes that the city does, they're looking at changing and adding an ordinance that would allow them to not necessarily put them in detox, but to possibly charge them with an offense. Criminal. And so with that criminal offense, yeah, you guessed it. It would bump it up to the county. No, no, no. we would stay with the city. Yeah, we would stay with the city. No, yeah. but but aren't we aren't we open? If, if they do something like that, aren't we opening ourselves to the possibility of taking somebody in that we shouldn't be taking in? Exactly. And then all of a sudden we have a problem in the jail, and then we get sued. Well, and that's where I, I've implemented a policy based off best practices, where anyone that's got a BAC of a point three or higher yeah. has to be medically cleared. Of course. But that's also, you know, it's not ideal either because not only is it a $1,500 uh, fee that's assessed of it, uh, uh, but it's also officer time that's spent up there. Well, well what does it take to, to clear these individuals? They got, they got, What's the screening that they it's do? It's a full screening at the office. Lab work, everything. And it takes at least 45 minutes just for the lab work to get back once they submit it, depending on, you know. But one thing you said, Adam, and then I think that's the most important point, you know, that we have to have with this issue, is its liability. If you don't take making sure that person is capable of sustaining where they're at, and they're not in all life threat, and you can't just put them in a cell for 12 hours or, or 24 hours without saying, "Hey, we checked you medically." And I mean, I get the whole reason behind this. I mean. There's, that's the reason. I mean, if it, it's happened in other jails, I mean, people have passed away because they that's, were. That's that's what I'm trying to drive at here. And there's that's a that's exactly right. Issue, but there's a morality issue. With it. Yes, there is. You can't just send somebody in a cell and say, "Well, have fun." And but the city's issue, I read, was that they hadn't budgeted for all this expense. Well, that's that's the cost of doing. I'm sorry. I mean, 
you know, I deal with that on a regular basis with the individuals that I'm re required to deal with, uh, as far as medical bills and everything else that we have to deal with. So I mean, it's. Oh, and I understand where that's coming from, but I think it's the it's the whole discussion we're having here. We keep talking about, you know, and and, and I I appreciate the conversation, but. You know, we talk about our budget here, and we don't want to spend more on the jail than we have to, but there comes a point where, you know what, we have to spend what we need to make the facility what we want the facility. We can't keep cutting corners and saying we want excellence and then end up at the bottom line. It's exactly. just that simple. If we've got to spend a little bit more money to get this facility where we want it, then we're just going to have to do it. It's just that simple. And, and I, I don't want to throw a bunch of money at a problem unless there's an actionable goal to get there. But we need to get those plans in place. We need to determine how we're going to get it done. We need to do it. It's just you, that simple. You hit the nail on the head. One of the exact, I can be more specific, I'm sure Rob will con concur with me. Very medical much. medical nurse and a, and a doctor. I'm sorry. We're not going to get a, a nurse to work in our jail and a doctor paying what we're paying. Of course not. There's, so we have, to, we have to step up and pay somebody to come in and do the job that we need done. And yes. that's, that, I'm sorry, when, whether way you want to use it, we have to pony up. Somebody has to pay that. We have to do it. We have no choice. If we don't have a nurse or a doctor, they are going to close our doors. They'll close their yes. We, But you see, we have to, we can't just flounder here and say, well, I'll get by, get by, get by. No, I, I, and, and that's been the problem with that facility for the last 30 years, is they got by, got by. Now we're having things happen that, you know, should have been taken care of years ago that haven't been. And and now we're we're suffering the consequences of of, of that ramification. Is that something that's that's within your budget now, Rob? Yeah, we have those positions established in our budget. Okay. Um, but you know, we had a, we had hired a, a nurse in January to replace our long term nurse. Uh, but you know, we brought her in. I think at a step eight on our scale and when she left she was still able to go find a job that paid four dollars more an hour as an RN versus what we were paying at a step eight. So in our, in, our current, in, yeah. Yeah. in our current budget now did, did, did we up it so that we have enough money That's or, gonna be, or we're, we're still gonna, gonna be just grasping it's gonna it be up. we budgeted for right around that step eight. See, I think we need to increase that. Maybe we need to increase that and increase the doctor also. Or well, we're just but we're just gonna grasp for straws again and, 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 and never get anywhere. Oh, and we have I really have no idea what we're gonna end up paying for the doctor, so we've kind of taken what the average has been because it's it's actually gonna be a casual position, it's not even a part-time position once we get everything set up for the healthcare administrator. It's more or less being available or issuing standing orders and then being available to give direction as needed to the to the full-time nurse. One thing we should add, Rob, the nurse we had before last year was been there a number of years, and she retired what a year ago. Yeah, Not even that. Though. Yeah, she retired earlier this year officially, but yeah. she yeah, she ended up getting sick. Now she passed away since then, so a year. But I mean, it's so you know, the dilemma we got caught with and nurses and doctors are hard to find. I've, I've solicited individually to, to doctors, nurse practitioners, PAs. I've gotten a hold of All True in Grand Forks, All True Clinic here, Mercy, uh, Premier Health, Toner County Medical, just trying to get someone to come in and, and help fill the gaps that we've had. And there's no one that's willing to assist us. So I didn't tell. And I've had a conversation with, with who we have in that spot now back in May, but she really wasn't too interested in taking it on because she realized how much work it was going to be as well. But now that she's in, uh, I think that we might be able to make it a long-term or a permanent thing for us. Uh, but right now she's doing everything. So uh, we owe her a lot as far as just in the last few weeks what she's done for Very us. Much. But that's a question I think we need answered. Is she going to be there for a long run or isn't it? I mean, it, instead of actively pursuing all this stuff, I think we need to aggressively, you know, we can't keep getting, well, I might stay till October, I might stay till December, I might stay. You know, will you, will you, will you, what's it going to cost so that we don't, you know, open the door and get the door shut again and open the door. You know, everybody's getting beat up over this all over the place, you know, whether it's these commission board members, uh, LEC board members, you know, the media is not doing us any favors at all on any of this. 
and I think we just need to quit being just active and be aggressive. You know, get these jailers trained. I mean, I've been hearing that we're training, we're training, we're training. Uh, Cass County, maybe you need to get Cass County here, you know, and say, we're going to pay you for blank number of days, and these are the cl classes that we can take care of. These are the training issues that we can take care of. I'm sure Steve has money in his budget that he can help, you know, pay some of these bills if we have to, you know, if we have to put up Cass County for a week, two weeks, you know, we just can't just be active anymore. We need to be aggressive so that we have answers that state that yes, we have a doctor, yes, we have a nurse, and yes, we have our COs trained. Because, you know, we've been saying we're going to get these COs trained for four years. And, and I understand we have a turnover, and that happens because I know what goes on in the work that goes on back there, but I mean, we need to to set the bar and set you know set it high and, and, and get to it and, and just do the job. And I got faith that we can do that, but we just need to get it done. So that's that's my assessment of the whole deal. I mean, I I've been you know behind the scenes knowing what's what's going on, but I I know that we need to get these jailers trained up. We need to get a physician. And we need to get a nurse. So, you know, if we need to, if we need to get twenty thousand dollars more in for a nurse, then, then you need to come and get a board, a board to say, hey, we're going to hand you up twenty more grand because we can't hire somebody, have them work for six months, and have them quit because they got four dollar an hour job better. You know, we we need to have you be able to say, I'll give you that four dollars. You know, I'm done. Yes. My question to this is. It seems to me as though we're all sitting here and we're all in agreement about how we need to step up and get this done. So I have a two-fold question. One, I don't know if we're necessarily empowering you with the tools to get the job done. And what is the stopping point that we're not empowering with you the tools to get the job done? Well, I have, and here's, here's kind of my failure through the last year, is that I've been constantly working on putting out fires instead of trying to prevent fires. Yes. So that's one of the things that, you know, I, I feel like I've got the leadership team complete now for me to be able to help you, know, to, to rely on them to be able to do their jobs where I don't have to be following up constantly on them, uh, to where I'll be able to start identifying those types of things and then be able to bring that to our board and let them know, hey, this is, you know, and, and there's a lot. I mean, there, it's mind-boggling to sit down and really think about everything. So. Well, I know it's a huge job, but I, I, you know, if an organization is to run correctly and run well, there's obviously always going to be those putting up fire screens. But when you think about the administrator, and you're supposed to, you should have, and, and hopefully now you do have that team in place, and you're confident that you do, that you're supposed to be long-term planning, long-term goal strategic. Where are we going to go to make this better and get better results? And we need to get to that point. My point is, I mean, I think we're all in agreement in this room, but how do we get there? Because, you know what, I've been sitting here for two years and it's been the same story over and over again, and I, I, I'm, just, I'm sick of it. <laughs> it's just that simple, and I'm not blaming you. I'm saying we need to empower you with the, with the ability to get the job done. It's just that simple. And, and whatever it takes to get through, let's just do it. Because, like, like Lucas said, we need our facility to have the confidence in the community. We need to have, and not just confidence in the community, we need to have better outcomes. I mean, we, we haven't even touched upon the point of recidivism. We haven't talked about giving the, the, the individuals that are in the jail the ability to not come back to that jail again and actually become productive citizens. And we're not even doing that. We're sticking them in the jail and rolling them back out again. No services, no tools, no help. Because we're not willing to invest. I don't know if we're not willing, we just haven't got to that point yet. But if we keep fighting, putting out fires on a day-to-day -day basis, we can't even get past that based on a step moving to the step where we can start to do those things. And I guess I appreciate all the efforts, but I mean, we have to, we have to figure out what the stumbling blocks are and we need to move forward because this, we need to have better outcomes. It's just that simple, at least in my mind. Yep, I agree. One of the things Bob said, he, he said, don't try to reinvent the wheel. There's a lot of good jails in the state. Go do what they're doing. Go watch what they're doing. Bring them in and have them teach you. 
So we had Cass County in here a number of years ago, and I thought it went real well. That they learned a lot. And then we got to get back to that point, which county we use. And I appreciate the uh, uh, is it Commissioner I can't remember what her title will be, but Leanne Birch, who's head of corrections, has, mm -hmm. has really started to look towards more of a, a different approach on how they're how they're jailing, and I think that's a positive step. But I think if, if we can get, can get to that point where we have the tools in place. You know, I don't want to be that facility that they're looking at and saying, well, we need to get them up to stuff. I want to be the one that's leading the way right. in getting those positive outcomes so we can really start to say, hey, look at us. We're the ones that are doing the job correctly and we're out front. And I, don't, I have confidence you can get us there. But my point is we need to figure out how to help you get us there. It's going to be a process. There's no doubt about that. Gentleman from the state working area, he said, uh, "Will be the process." But he said he's willing to help us. And like I said earlier, again, Bird says, "Go up there and keep it open. Do what you got to do." So they're all on board to help. But I think Rob's very capable of getting things turned around, and I think it's turned around some. But the medical problem jumped up and. We need to take care of that on a long-term basis somehow, you know, whether we need to have a backup or what we need to do. Well, and I mean, in my mind, you know, eventually we're going to need a new facility, right? We want to have a re-entry center and we want a lot of things, and that's going to involve bond debt. And you're never going to get this community to approve bond debt unless you can prove that this facility can work and that this organization, this unit can work. I mean, because if you're going to try to issue GO bonds, uh, it goes to a vote of the community. And we've seen votes from this community where the value is not entirely clear to, to the voting populace of this community. And so if we want that, if we want to be sort of the shining city on the hill someday, we need to start with our operations because that's the one thing that we can control right now. I mean, for the most part, the facility is what it is. I think that you know, we need to be focused right now on trying to have excellent people. And I know that you are, but the other things will come if we can stop the sort of slow hemorrhage uh, that we've seen. Any other questions? Thoughts? Rob? Steve? Well, it's, we, we got a lot of work to do and, and we'll, we'll get her done. So, Gentlemen, thank you for your time. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Okay, and back to your portfolio. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> We're done for long. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Rob. You're well, welcome. I guess, uh, I don't know, Katie, do you have anything you want to say? Oh, I just came in to listen. Okay. Well, as far as I know, uh, it seems that everything is running uh, as it should be. Um, to chase semi bad news after bad news. Uh, we decided to reopen the hiring process for library director. We interviewed three candidates, uh, one of which we thought would be a very excellent uh, director, and she unfortunately took a job elsewhere. Uh, another one of the three answered a Skype call in his bed, uh, and that was one of the more absurd things I've ever had to, to experience. Uh, and so. As I'm sure you can imagine, we didn't extend an offer that direction, and uh, because of the, he, he answered a Skype call, so like webcam, in his bed. He was lying in bed. For an interview. For an interview. Hands like this. Laid there, whole time. Anyway, so, it's neither here nor there. We've reopened uh, interviews for that, and hopefully we can find some candidates of merit. Uh, and the other news, and I hope I'm not undercutting uh, Mr. Olson, seeing as he represents that on this commission, but I'm not sure that he's aware, uh, the director of the Heritage Center is leaving, and her last day will be on the 22nd of this month. Um, so that's another position that we now need to fill. And uh, as an aside, that's been a personal crusade of mine uh, to, to try to convince people that we need to do better. Uh, on behalf of young professionals in this community. And the two examples that I went around using for months on end was Angela Plummer, the library director, and Rachel Johnson, the Heritage Center director. 
And I said, it won't matter what we pay them, it won't matter whatever, if we don't make this a better community, they'll leave and now they're leaving. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that, that feels to me a little bit like a punch to the gut. Uh, and I feel personally that I have failed in what I set out to do here and what I ran on as a platform that you know we need to make this an attractive place for younger people and I sit here still months later without the answers and wishing that we had a few. Um, yeah, I guess I, I don't really have anything else to announce. Okay. Commissioner Frith. Uh-huh. Something <laughs> good. Something good. Positive well, I, I did have a discussion with uh, Sheriff Nelson about his budget, and uh, did we get that increase that you're looking for in the preliminary? Okay. Because I missed a couple things in my previous one. You missed a couple things in his previous ones. And it was pretty specific about what the increase was. So uh, we got that taken care of. Uh, Bill informed you on what's going on with the uh, extension and. Uh, it sounds like we'll have another group of young people from Ramsey County uh, representing the county and 4 shooting sports down in Grand Island next June for uh, shotgun participation where, you know, Ramsey County seems to win that state competition on an annual basis and it's up to the kids and their parents whether or not they want to make that commitment to, to attend that. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity. You can only go once for that particular um, activity through 4 H. And so the four gentlemen, uh, four were from Devil's Lake itself, and one up in the Hamden area, um, Ordale Morstead, uh, was the other gentleman from up in that area. So we'll have another four, four people participating in the 4 H shotgun program next June in Grand Island. Um, yeah. That's a once-in-a-lifetime thing. It's a once-in-a-lifetime, yeah. Four H will only allow you to attend their national competition and once per event. I mean, you can go. You know, we've had several several kids go to multiple multiple events. Um, I think one of them went four times in different events. Archery, full shotgun and you know so it's uh it's quite an accomplishment because you have to go through the, the state competition and win that and so you get down there and, and shotgun's probably the most popular event down there and uh, you know they'll have you know 32 35 uh, states represented 140 or so uh, kids participating in it but what you have to remember is that every state has to go through the same process and depending on some of those states you know like texas for instance is really one of the big ones you know they have a hundred thousand kids in their shotgun program so when you're competing against texas you're not competing against those four you're competing against the other hundred thousand that are that have participated within that sport within texas so it's a it's a it's a huge accomplishment and a huge honor for for these kids to represent us. And I'm sure they'll be coming around uh, soon with fundraising opportunities. Uh, it's quite expensive to send a shotgun to down there. Yeah. Um, social services, we've already talked about. Uh, County Housing Authority, we did not have a meeting last month. Uh, and we didn't have a whole lot to talk about, so we decided to just push it to, to this month. Um, just a quick heads up that the Northeast Nine, we're going to have a meeting on Thursday, 5.30 p.m. start. We're going to have supper, and then uh, we will have a quick meeting talking about uh, resolutions. Why we had to schedule it so quickly was our original concept was due at the end of September. Well, resolutions had to be in by the 15th. Uh, to the resolutions committee, we're doing it a little differently this year, I believe. Uh, so we uh, had to schedule a little bit quicker than we anticipated, but hopefully we'll have a decent turnout. Uh, and then the, the one thing that's going to be interesting there is uh, we're having the individual from True North Steel come up and talk about the bridge uh, structures that we're looking at doing out on uh, that Morris Township Bridge. So I think that would be beneficial to be there, learn a little bit about that, see if it's something we do want to do, and, and uh, learn a little bit about that. It's, it's a useful topic because 
you know, a lot of us in the Northeast Nine have a lot of bridges that are going to need to be worked on to replace the next few years. So it's uh, something we're about. Um, uh, forward Devil's Lake, uh, nothing too crazy to talk about there, I don't think. Uh, I'm trying to think what else we have to talk about. I think at this point that's about it. Rachel said that biofibers move along. Well, yeah, uh, they, they have some equipment in the building. Uh, they're waiting to see where they're going to go from there, I guess, is, is what I know for this point. Okay. Well, do you want to see if uh, Jim's ready to come back in? Sure. <coughs> One thing to add on the jail is uh, Towner County Auditor was at the uh, meeting we had last Tuesday. And uh, she's recommending to their board today not to pay the bill that all the counties would pay. So I just want you to be aware of that. What will happen if they don't pay it? I'm not sure. So. I'm not sure. I imagine that's a uh, violation of the joint powers. That'd be my guess. So. But I'm not sure. I would guess that's probably right. So. so they might be out. And the mill is about twenty-five or six thousand. Right. But that was her recommendation. Going to be her recommendation. But I also, you will also probably agree with me that she didn't explain it to her commissioners very well. No, I on the, on the benefits. Yeah. I mean, she's just looking at the numbers. She's just crunching numbers. Uh, Nine one one isn't in there, and, and no, I don't. I don't think they're looking at the whole picture. Right. I don't know what they're doing. Nine one one. Well, if they're not in on the jail, they're you know, nine one one. In my portfolios, I talk to the auditor regularly. I talk to Kristen. I talk to Stacy. Everything seems to be pretty much business as normal. I know Kathy's been putting in a lot of hours on the budget, which you know we're going to finalize. Well, finalize part of it today. Preliminary budget anyhow. Other than that, you know we talked about a lot of work to center to death. The Heritage Center came up, so that's basically all I have. So at that point, I think we're just waiting for the one to go. So they're printing off some things. Oh. Right in. <coughs> at that point, I guess I can ask for vis visitors and delegations. There are none. Come on, Katie, stand up and tell us something. Nothing good, huh? Everything's good in the recorder's office. <laughs> Steve like to explain that little extra in his budget just as long as we got a few seconds. Um, I forgot to add in like the in-car video for the new car. If if things go through, you know, which is about forty five hundred to five thousand dollars just to buy it. But then once we have, I mean once we've had we've had for we we initially bought them all on grant money, but the ones we've had we have had very little trouble with and then we've got this new system that they are all like yeah, I did. It's a necessity in, in today's world to have, for as far as the courts and everything else. And what was the other item? Well, the car computer was three thousand. So, and then a, a, a new vest for the uh, individual, which is about a thousand dollars by the time we're all said and done. So, <clears throat> I think I added ten thousand dollars to what so and I got about nine thousand five hundred. I think of just those specific items. So that's the reason for the, the deviation or the, or the increase request. And of course, that's all contingent on what happens. So I'm well aware of that. So I'm just waiting to see what goes on. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
proper. I was in bad shape. I think they just have some issues on some corners and some seams. Yeah, that's my understanding. Because it's just been, it's just been, it's, it's, I've been up there. It's just been patched and cobbled together over the years. Probably real similar to what we did on the Exactly, exactly. It's just been cobbled together for years and it's finally caught up a little bit. Who do I talk to about getting in there or whatever? Then is she? She'd be able to help you. Rachel. Yeah. Rachel would help you. Just don't walk around the outside edge while you're up there. Send Who is the lady that haunts the place? She might be up there. Lillian. Lillian. Does she talk? I swear I've seen Lillian on the roof putting gas in. Well, stop on the dog with a kid. I mean, those would be. Is that the one that lives downtown Clark? What's our carryover? What's our carryover? Our general process. Yeah, yeah. This guy's going to win. It's just under a million. Yeah, under a million. That's what my next question is. So, I mean, if, if we don't but budget for it now, we can stick it in the final and just use some of our carryover for the general. Because I would imagine it's not going to be a huge you know, dollar figure we're going to be looking at. There's no, been no, estimates no. made over the years. It's, 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 it's nothing more. So we still have a little bit of time. We don't have to necessarily stick additional dollars in right now.
So where are we at in those two relation to last year? Um, if you, the formula that was given from the state, and that's why I was here for many hours, because I, I, I didn't believe in the way that they were telling me, they were telling me, take away 20 mils from 2016 in order to compare apples to apples. And like, how, you know, how can you do that? Can't, can't take away something that you already had there. Um, so, with phone calls with Linda, everything, you know, the t taking away the 20 mils is like taking away the 12% buy up. So, um, if you go minus the 20 and it's plus another 6 or 7 mils off. <laughs> so we're down six or seven mils from last year then, basically. Well, I mean, if you think you're in the 20, but she told me just to not even put that in the picture, but how did the 20 mils for social services that you're not budgeting figure in there? That's just a wash with the property tax buy down? Close. Close. It's close. Like 300. Close. Close. Yeah, it's got to be pretty close. Because you have carryover. Yeah. <coughs> the, the, the 12% was only 1.7 million. Right. 1.723 plus then you got the increase on it will add in. So that way you're going to get pretty close. It'll be plus 1.8, 1.9. The 1.9 we got? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gee. Gee. She helped me a lot to understand it because I didn't. Yeah. You know. And, and other other counties that I reached out to, they're having they're having the same issue. You know, but if we didn't have such an increase in our tax belt valuation, that's what she pointed out to me that it was almost like a two million dollar increase in our valuation. So, which is good. Okay. Like your school was six or seven million up on the valuation. Mm -hmm. Substantial, I know that. I know they have to do an increase though, don't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Six percent. Got a motion? We have a motion and a second. second. We have a motion and a second to approve the 2018 preliminary budget roll call, please. Aye. Brown. Aye. Wakefield. Aye. Mike Bond. Aye. Olson. Aye. Motion approved. That? Mm -hmm.